Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome back to Final Trade. So, you know, I've been guilty of something for a little while here, which is talking about capitalization of card stores getting wrecked in the last six months and not really explaining it. And I felt like there are probably some people in the audience who have no idea what I'm talking about. There's probably some people who just understand it as soon as I say it. And there's probably a lot of people in between who have a little bit of an idea, but not incredibly clear. And so I had originally thought of making a spreadsheet video and showing a bunch of cash flows. And I thought, well, that's pretty boring. People like looking at money and at cards and, you know, why not do this? Besides, when you have little kids and you're trying to teach them about money, having a gangster stack of $1 bills is really useful. So I can use these here. Now, this has nothing to do with Zendikar Rising. It's got nothing to do with Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. It was just some open booster boxes I had laying around. So I used those to represent product. So I've divided this up. We have Watsi over here and they make booster packs. They got lots of them. Okay, and they're going to sell the booster packs to LGSs for one dollar per pack. Yes, it's it's the glorious days of 1865 when magic packs only cost one dollar. And then you have your LGS here and they're going to sell packs for two dollars per pack. Now, you notice the LGS also has some money. And this is the capitalization of the LGS that we're talking about. It's money that it has saved up from previous business operations in the past. And then we have all the consumers, and these are our players, our collectors, investors, everybody, uh, box breakers, everyone in the ecosystem who buys sealed product. And look, they have a little bit of money, and we don't represent any product here because, well, when they get it, they open it and they consume it. They're consumers. So it it's kind of uh, gone after it, it gets to here. So we don't represent it there. And, and likewise, we don't represent any money here because Watsi is a, a giant company. It reinvests it in its operations. It pays it as dividends to shareholders, things like that. So um, we're mainly concerned with money here from the consumers because this is where it enters the ecosystem, where it goes to the LGS, it will go here and then disappear this way, but product moves this way. And, you know, you have to understand this kind of fundamental thing in markets. Um, Watsi wants dollar bills more than they want cards. And LGSs want cards more than they want the initial dollar bills, but then they get some cards and then they want some more dollar bills from this direction more than they want the cards. And so that's how you end up with this movement back and forth um, now, I've left out distributors here, and to make this a simplistic model at first, onto which we will then add more and more detail and uh, depth, uh, the distributors, we're just going to treat them as pass-throughs. Basically, we're just going to pretend that they don't increase the price of the product, that they don't really contribute much. And I know that's not technically correct, but hey, a playmat is only so big and my camera stand will only reach so high above it. So I didn't have room for a fourth column and it really would not add anything to this discussion. So what happens here? Um, a consumer, he comes in here and he walks into the card store and he says, hey, uh, these packs are $2 each, you know? I'd, I'd like to buy one. So he buys one for $2, right? So you move $2 over here and he gets a pack and, you know, it gets consumed. And so then he buys some more and, you know, he gets another pack and he's out of money. And so the card store says, oh, you know, we're low on inventory. Hey, Watsi, here's, uh, you know, here's two, four, six. Yeah, there's $8. That looks good. So they give $8 over to Watsi. And they get eight booster packs. All right. So, you know, commerce is working and everything is great. And then Watsi goes to the printer and it says, ha ha, yeah, here's some more booster packs. And so uh, this is kind of how it normally works. And you can imagine that over time, the LGS, it pays $1 for booster packs and it sells them for $2. So over time, this capitalization increases. And in our simplistic version of the model, that's exactly how it works. And then payday comes around and say the consumer makes six bucks, you know, and so he decides, hey, I'm going to walk back in the card store. I'm going to give over six bucks and I'm going to get me three packs because I'm a gambling addict and this is what I do. So he gets those three packs and he goes and he consumes them in whatever way he likes, whether busting them open and doing something with them or throwing them back in a closet forever. 
So they disappear out of the ecosystem. But then we come to the last six months. So what has been happening in the last six months? Well, um, first off, Watsi keeps pushing more and more and more product into the pipeline here. So it pushes more product in. And you know how I said that this was a simplistic model, that this was not exactly at the start how things worked? Well, the store does not always get to simply come over to Watsi and say, oh, via the distributors, I will buy some more of this product and I will refill my shelves, which are bare because the customer came in here and bought a bunch. That's not entirely how it works. So you end up having allocations. You've got crap like the commander decks that are the dud commander decks with every release that don't really sell. You've got now jumpstart with every standard release. You've got leftover pre-release packs, which may or may not be any good. You've got gift boxes, which just, you know, some people love them and some people just kind of don't even realize they exist. But stores are required to take all of that stuff. Stores don't get to just say, hey, I want the one commander deck that's good and I don't want the rest. No, they get cases of commander decks that have one of each in them. So in one way or another, they're forced to take the dud products. So it's not so simple that card stores just get to say, hey, I sold some product replenish me. Instead, Watsi is saying through the distributors, because Watsi forces the distributors that we've kind of left out to simplify this, Watsi forces the distributors to take all that product, and then the distributors have to force the LGSs to take it. And so they say, hey, uh, you know, you're going to have to take this, and 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 you know you, you you better take some of this too. And suddenly the card store says, "Oh, geez, well, you know, you know they have to pay all this money for that product, and all that money disappears out of the ecosystem to the left side to uh, Watsi and Hasbro and shareholders and everything else, and the printers who actually make the cards that but remember, we're simplifying this model. So now, whoa, what's happened here? The card store is loaded up on product, and it doesn't have much money left. But it's okay. How much money did we say consumer gets? He's got six bucks. All right, there's six bucks. So he comes in and he says, you know, I'm an addict. Here's my six bucks. It's two bucks a pack. So for six bucks, I get my three packs this week. And he takes his three packs and he's happy. He goes home, he cracks them, he builds deck, he decks, he plays with his friends. Everything's great. And then the card store says, well, oh, okay, well, I made some money. Um, oh, and then there's a new release and the card store says, well, I have got to buy the new release because I know I will have customers who come in who are enthusiastic to buy it and I have to get it. So they go to Watsi and they say, hey, uh, you know, I can really only afford five packs of this new release. And Watsi says, okay, okay. Via the distributors, they say, well, here's some more of your product. And by the way, uh, you're going to have to take this and you're going to have to take this. And hold on, hold on. You know, we just printed this. And, uh, you know, we, we just printed some of this too. And we just printed some of this. So, you know, here's some more stuff for you. You know, this will, this will be waiting here. Here, you have, to, you have to take some of this. So, you know, we're gonna need, we're gonna need that too. And you can understand what's happening here. This pile of capitalization of the LGS just keeps getting smaller and smaller because Watsi says printers go burr and you are forced to take product and the consumer cannot consume all that product. And this is what we've seen in 2021. Magic released, I believe it was seven sets in 2021 and it's eight expansions in 2022. It's either seven and eight or it was six and seven. Major expansions. And that doesn't even include stuff like uh, Warhammer 40k Commander. It doesn't include secret layers, which mostly bypass the LGSs anyway, but do suck money out of the consumers so that money can't come into the LGSs. And now, what else is happening? What else is happening right now in 2022? Well, now this week, instead of our consumer getting paid $6, he only gets paid $4. Or 
Maybe he says, you know, the price of steak has gone up, and so I have been forced to buy ground beef instead and spend more money even on that ground beef. And so I only have $4 to allocate to this, even if his wages have not gone down. He may only have $4 to allocate to this instead of the 6 that he used to have. So now when he comes in and he says, I got these $4 to allocate, he comes into the card store and he, he can only get two packs. Now, how does this affect the ecosystem? Well, he's kind of upset. He doesn't get to enjoy his hobby as much. This money comes over, and, of course, the LGS is looking uh, a little hesitantly over to Watsi and seeing, oh, man, look at just all this product everywhere. It's just never-ending. The printers just never stop. The releases never stop. The products never stop. And the card store either can't, take more product because it doesn't have enough money or it's so flush with product it has to start selling it at a loss it says hey i'll sell these packs for one dollar a pack just to get them off the books so i have more money here in my capitalization pile and something that we've glossed over to this point is money doesn't only move this way on this 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 analogy like i said the consumer here he got four dollars this time instead of six dollars like the the first several times money moves different ways in here too there's money that goes this way because hey i gotta pay rent and there's money that moves this way because we have an electric bill at the store and it went up and there's money that moves this way because we have various other expenses insurance employees everything else and so there's this constant pool of money coming out this way and it doesn't get to go this way in exchange for more packs coming this way. Instead, it goes out this way for overhead expenses, operating expenses, all of those kind of incremental things that stores have to pay, whether or not they sell any booster packs at all. And this is where the real problem lies, is that those expenses don't change. In fact, they're going up right now. But Watsi keeps saying, hey, you've got to take more product. Where's our money? You have to take more through the distribution network. We're going to have a release every month. Some months, we might have two releases. You know, when we hit Dominaria Remastered and the Phyrexia set and Jumpstart 22, you know, either two of those releases will be coming in December or two will be coming in January. I see all kinds of different claims about when Dominaria Remastered is coming, but more and more and more product, more and more demand on the capitalization is coming to the card store trying to drain what was once in this pile. And the consumer has less money to replenish that pile from this direction. And ultimately the problem is when the card store gets depleted and it's sitting on a bunch of product, it will start selling it at a loss as we've seen for the last six months. And eventually as this goes on long enough, the consumer closes his wallet a little more incrementally every week he spends a little less money on the packs that he loves and less money goes into the LGS while they continue to have to pay overhead costs. And eventually they go out of business. And when they do, they probably fire sale this stuff. It disappears. That helps the system work out some of all of this extra product that it can't handle. But ultimately, this is a it's a perfect storm of problems. It is that consumer getting his wallet closed, having less money to devote to this, less money to push into the LGS in exchange for cards, while at the same time, Watsi says, we need every dollar that LGS has so that we can put it in our revenue reports and we are going to print product like crazy and force everyone to take it in order to get that money out of the LGSs. And that's the situation we're in. And it's, it's unfortunate, but like I said, it's this confluence of poor decisions and bad timing. You know, the whole macro economy is suffering right now. It's probably going to continue to suffer for several more months. I don't know how much worse it will get. I'm not an economic doomer, but I think it probably will get at least a little worse from here. But I don't know, maybe it'll get a lot worse. Maybe in the next several months, we start seeing a bunch of card stores going out of business. I expect at least some will because some card stores <laughs> historically some card stores are incredibly undercapitalized and they basically just barely make it expansion to expansion. Now, 
the other side of this is what if you had a card store and you know it had some inventory maybe it's got a good amount yeah let's say it has a pretty good amount of inventory here you know yeah so let's say you've got a special card store and it's really well capitalized you know it's got it's got some money maybe it's got some more money if you have a really good card store that's well capitalized right now then when these other poorly capitalized card stores start to fail you can step in and buy all their product at a discount and then you can just sit it up in the back room on the shelf wait for it to appreciate slowly sell it over time and do really well so there's this kind of bifurcation between card stores where some are on the knife's edge constantly poorly capitalized operating set to set trying to keep the lights on but then there's ones that have lots of money so that they can weather the storm they can weather bad times like this and then when they come out on the other side say six months from now they've got a giant giant mountain of these products from this era that a lot of people skipped or missed out on because their wallet was getting squeezed on the consumer side so uh, I, I hope that was a good model of how this kind of works. You know, you, you try to build up models like this and you start really simplistically and then you kind of add more and more of the nuance until you reach the climax of the story, which is there are a lot of screwed LGSs right now that are probably going to go out of business. So let me know what you thought about this explanation. If Hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Any suggestions for other videos, let me know. Otherwise, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Join me on Final Trade. Thanks a lot, everyone.